grab. Um. Oh, your uh, your pigeon situation. You mentioned during that that there was a time that a squirrel ran up to Joe, and you had. To... Can you explain what happened with the squirrel? The squirrel story. Yes. Um. Yeah. I, I keep saying I'll tell this for real someday. I'll do another like Tumblr blog about it or something and, and tell the real story of the time a squirrel sat on Joe Walker. But uh, the long and, long and short of the story is that uh, we were living together in Ann Arbor in a house and uh, somebody left. Oh, we had had a party like the night before in, in the basement. We had people in the basement, so we opened the, the, like, the cellar door to let some air in. It was like, you know, spring. It was nice. And then we went to bed, and the door was left slightly ajar. So in the morning, a squirrel crawled in. And Jim had gone down and seen that there was a squirrel in there. So he went upstairs and closed the door, the door to the, to the house, which makes sense, because then hopefully the squirrel will just go back out, right? Um, and then I guess somebody decided that the squirrel had left, because they had done see it around immediately. So they closed the back door and opened the house basement. Uh, so we knew that this squirrel had happened, we thought it left, and I basically, I came downstairs and I was like eating a yogurt or something, I don't know, I was walking around, and uh, Joe was laying on the couch watching TV, and um, I started walking to go back upstairs, and I looked down and he was going, this little squirrel staring at me, and so I just very casually turned around and go, the squirrel's upstairs, and then I walked sort of away from it, and Joe takes it and goes, no. what? And then right when he does that, the squirrel goes, boom, boom, and lands on him. And he went, <gasps> and then it went, boom, and bump, jumped from there and jumped over the window and started trying to frantically get out the window and scraping at the blinds. And of course, it couldn't get out the window. Right. Um, so, it, like, yeah, it jumped around. Squirrels are scary. Pigeons are not scary. They're just, like, kind of like rats with wings. But squirrels have sharp teeth and sharp claws, and they've got insane little eyes. You can just tell them they're in the brain that they're crazy. Um, and this one was particularly frightened, so it was like a crack squirrel. <laughs> it was jumping around, and we had to, uh, we eventually had to take, I went around to the other door to open the door to let it out, and eventually Joe Walker just took a big comforter and threw it over the squirrel, and we threw the comforter outside, and then we moved the comforter and the squirrel ran away. So it was fine, we just wanted to get it out of the house. That sounds rough. Yeah. I'm not a, I'm not a squirrel fan, so. Mm. Um, do you prefer doing improv to, like, straight plays? No, I wouldn't say that. Um, where, where I am and what I do, I guess, right now in New York, it's just easier for me to do improv. Because, and it's also something I like because it can be new every time. You know, it can be new every night. And the best part about improv is, like, no props, no, no production value, no space requirement. You can just get up and do it and nobody expects you to have any of those things. So... It's a great way to train, and it's a great way to do stuff that's really mobile, which is important sort of when you are uh, either just one person or you don't, you know, you can't afford to hire a whole team or whatever you want to do. And, and it's also sort of like a great skill. It's a great training thing. Something to learn with. I've already mastered plays, so now I'm <laughs> Okay. And you just said you're not that good of a singer. Do you like doing musical theater, or would you rather do regular... I like singing. I do like singing. Um, I don't particularly like... I'm going to be killed for this. I don't particularly like musical theater. And I never have. Uh, so this, doing the Potter stuff was like in Starship is like a... It's a jump. I don't usually do that kind of thing. But um, I do like singing. And I've gotten better at musical theater since I've had to do it. And I've, I would love to do it. Like stuff like Book of Mormon, like I'm all about. I love that. But, like, I don't know, the, like, the real dramatic musicals. And do you prefer comedy to, like, drama and stuff? Or would you like to do uh, like, For musicals, shows? yeah, definitely. For plays, I've actually done, uh, in college, I did a lot more of, like, dark dramatic work. And I love that. It's a lot of fun. Um, but my main goal right now with sort of to have a, a large group of people interested in what you do is to make people smile a little bit, you know, and to bring some joy into things. Um, and I love doing that. If that's one of my favorite things to hear from people is that um, what we've done has, you know, made them smile or made it easier for them to get through their day or their their week or their life or whatever. That's really great for me. That you can sort of be an inspiration, and bring some joy to people. 
How do you handle that when they tell you like that you're like a role model and stuff like that? Because I know a lot of them feel that way. It's, I mean, it's very flattering. Um, I don't, I, you know, I never really <laughs> signed up to be a role model. Uh, but if I can be a, something positive for people, I'd love to. I'm glad I can. As long as people understand that I'm human just like they are and I make mistakes and have flaws and faults. And, you know, I think most people in general are, are willing to to accept that, that you just like they are. But you got to try, right? you got to <laughs> try to be good. Do you so. feel like you have like an image to portray when you're in fan situations, or uh, a little bit? I mean, I feel like I feel like I'm pretty free to be myself because I'm not that negative of a person in general. So I don't feel like I'm like hiding some horrible, dark, you know, twisted inside or anything. I feel like I'm pretty free to be myself. But definitely, when there's kids around, I try not to say. After this month and after September when you're recording music with Charlene all month. <laughs> do you have like things in sight that you want to do? Yeah, there's a couple things I'm going to do. Actually, once this show gets on its feet this Sunday, I'm, my stress level is going to go way down because um, at least all the pieces will be in order and I'll have done it once. So, but my goal is um, I'm hoping to do more in September. So if you do, people didn't make it up for the August one, I'll, I'll try to do one or two more in September. And because the shows are pretty new every time, it should be a lot of fun. And hopefully I can get even more new stuff in there in between. My whole goal is to keep it pretty much a new show every night so that if people wanted to come every night, they could. And they at least wouldn't be bored. You know, they might know this is coming or know that's coming, but at least they won't get bored. Um, and also to have a show that it's like, if I needed to end up doing a monthly or bi-weekly show or something like that, that I could. That, that could be something I could do. And then, you know, then I could be like a standing or running thing in New York would come and see it, or if all goes really well, I'd love to take it around, you know, it's pretty light, it's just me and some videos and some friends, so, um, you know, set up new guests in every town or whatever, that'd be a lot of fun, I'd love that, but that's all iffy, that's all. Well, you probably definitely do like Chicago and LA, you've got people there. Yeah, those two would be easy, that'd be great, and then, I don't know, I mean, like, yeah, those two alone would be great. Yeah, so that's a good start, right, mini tour, three city mini tour or something? Um, do you know anything about what's coming up for Star Kid? Is there any shows in the works right now? I know you're not going to be able to tell me specifics, because none of you ever do. But <laughs> um. We do have a lot of little things planned coming up, but there's, uh, as far as I know, there's no, uh, nothing particularly set in stone for December. Um, and there are some larger projects that we've been working on and talking about, but uh, those probably wouldn't come to fruition until past it. Or past the summer. Um, do you see yourself relocating to Chicago to be with them? Or, because I think we talked about that a little bit before. Uh, yeah, we mentioned it. Um, it really depends. It really, I like it here in New York. I kind of have a little bit of a life here in New York. Uh, I love my friends very, very dearly. Uh, but um, I, didn't, I didn't move to Chicago when they all moved there. And I do have... I do have a, uh, I'd love to be there with them and doing that, but I don't know um, if that's the, the most effective place for me to be. I kind of like being here in New York, and I can do stuff like have this one-man show and, and sort of represent the Starkid and Starkid fans in New York, which I think is an important place to be represented in the theater world. Yeah, nice if Starkid did other things here, it's cool, it's fine. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs>